Hey, Brandon. Hey, Emily. All right. New link is working. Yeah. I'm good so far. <laughs> I'm a little frustrated that we didn't catch that before the APAC meeting. Well, the old link on the SIG security one is apparently still working as well because I I was I opened that one instead accidentally. <clears throat> Very packed agenda today. I haven't even looked at it. I've been talking with Liz. <laughs> about the white paper? No, about the name. Oh. Um. <laughs> it's a fun one. Okay. I think I got resolution on it. <laughs> okay. So I need to add that to the agenda to talk about. I will. So we have an item on the triage stuff. Is this something that we want to cover today? This or? was you and I's discussion to kind of drive more membership in the triage. Yeah. yeah. That's what that was. It should be relatively brief and probably pull up the triage project board as well. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, let me add the naming item first. Probably be. It should be relatively quick and simple and is more a point of clarification. The doc is going to jump real quick. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll see a couple of new faces today. The new Zoom meeting links got everybody tripped up, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a result of the name change and we didn't catch it in time for the APAC meeting. Let me put that in the channel in case. We should probably generally have it linked in the channel as part of the header. Okay. Or I'll give it a couple more more minutes, yeah. And then are you willing to take down one of those guitars and jam a little for us or at some point <laughs> oh sweet <laughs> we have we have our agenda for agenda today andres has been on me about this so maybe you know at, at some point if we we'll do a cncf um um you know we do a stand-up comedy slash music session maybe Sounds and maybe we'll brilliant. get we'll get this to come by and play something else <laughs> i think what you're describing is a talent show which i can't agree with hard enough <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that'll be fun. All right, I think we have more people joining in. I am going to post this. All right, I put it in there. Um, we do need one or two scribes, so if anyone wants to sign up, that would be great.
Okay, I just saw someone adding an uh, item. Um, oh, I see multiple people adding items. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you could put your name beside, that would be great. And I will move these down to the agenda. And some arbitrary order. So again. Okay, so I think we have a good number of people in here already. Um, so just to start off again, um, this meeting is, is being recorded and you know all the usual CNCF um, TOC, oh, sorry, guidelines and, and code of conduct apply. So um, hi everyone. And I think we, we may have like a couple of new faces here from KubeCon. So hi, my name is Brandon. Um, and I think maybe we, we can do kind of like a, a, a check-in, maybe go by. Um, so I'm going to post the, the document link. These are the minutes of the meeting. Um, what uh, you should do is you should ensure that you have your name down in the attendance. And if you, uh, you have an update, you can just put something there. Cool. So we're going to start with um, just brief check-ins. Um, looks like... The first item here is um, Andrew. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who played, contributed, arranged, facilitated all the meetings for KubeCon CTF. Uh, it went down uh, acceptably, nothing burned, apart from uh, perhaps some AWS silicon. We had two and a half thousand VMs over the course of the day. Uh, nobody got all the flags, and I will run through the whole thing end to end on um, on Dave McKay's raw code clustered thing tomorrow. So uh, probably a bit of the timing and the speed runs trying to get through and demo everything was a little bit compressed in terms of time. So uh, I will do it as a more verbose attempt tomorrow. Awesome. Um, could you post a link to that or like some schedule in the chat and then we put it in the doc? <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> um, so before we start with um, Rob, I see you have an item there, but I think we already have an agenda item for it, right? So um, we will we will get to that. Um, do we have any new members that would like to introduce themselves today? All right. I guess if and if you if you want also or your mic isn't working, just feel free to like put it in the chat to just have a shout out say hi. All right. So Let's um, get started with the agenda. We have a very packed agenda. We have like seven items or something. <laughs> um, so we're going to first check in with the, the, um, the SIG working groups APEC meeting. So from the APEC side, um, do we have any updates or from the policy work group and our NIST counterparts? I think Arun is going to update from the policy work group side, so I don't want to steal her thunder. But Arun, uh, is that correct? I don't see her on the call. Oh, okay. Uh, but you have an agenda item for that, right? Oh, uh, oh Arun has one. Yeah. I, well, then just a, a quick five second update. We, we did have a call this morning, 8 a.m. is our usual call time. Um, we did discuss the, the difference between the this tag security policy team and then there's a Kubernetes policy work group. So we're sorting out all that governance stuff. So if anybody's interested, uh, feel free to review the Google Doc and the, uh, the PRs listed on that Google Doc. Awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, if you could put a link to that as well, maybe in the. I will do so. Thank you. Cool. Um, all right. So let's get to the next item then. Um, actually, before that, any any updates? Anyone from the APEC site that's on today? So that should be a line item just to review the meeting notes. Unfortunately, the APAC meeting that was scheduled for this week did not occur due to a Zoom link problem. Stop. So that has been corrected. OK. All right. All good then. So the next item we have today is the administrative updates. Um, Emily. So welcome, everybody, to the security tag. Um, during KubeCon, it was announced that the SIGs would all be renamed to tags. A couple of quick notes about that. There is some uh, legacy terminology within the repository that as we have time and as people have energy, please go through and update it. But a couple of notes about those changes. For informal and internal communications, it is requested that um, we can refer to ourselves as STAG, but for public awareness and events, such as public content on the repo, we refer to ourselves as security tag. The reason for this is so that we do not confuse our audience or potential members um, and the public with storage tag, who also has rights to the same acronym. So just a quick update about that. And also, there are going to be some more changes that are coming down associated with the administration of the tag. The chairs have a little bit more work picked up for, um, for us, but that's to help the CNCF serve us better. Awesome. So long story short, we are only a stack idea indoors, not outdoors. <laughs> uh, cool. Thanks, Emily. Uh, and Daniel, thank you for signing up as a scribe and helping us scribe today. Um, so the next item uh, is on the triage team. And so this is this is something that Emily and I discussed a, a little bit before. Um, and the idea is to get kind of reorganize how we are doing triage of the issues and kind of um, talk a little bit more about how we can continue with this. So, so historically, it's been kind of, um, and let me, let me bring up the triage font. This is a shared screen. This one. So traditionally, we had kind of a triage team, which was pretty much chess and TLs. Uh, and the idea is, you know, we had all these things that we kept track of, move things around, and then try to figure it out. So uh, I think there, there are two things that we, we want to do here. Um, and, and maybe Emily can chime in. Um, but I think the, the two goals that we have is to one is to reorganize it so that it would uh, work better with um, you know the, the roadmap, uh, the roadmap bot that we have and the project spot that we have today. And the other the other goal that we're trying to achieve is to get uh, more people. Maybe if you've been involved with the community for a while, you know, we want to see whether we can involve, get, get uh, more of the community involved with trying to triage these issues and, you know, get them moving forward and be in the right place. Yeah, so a lot of what's been going on is through the roadmap planning, we discovered as chairs and as tech leads that we are leaving work on the table. We are not finding it. And a lot of that has to do with some of the great suggestions that are coming from the community are not getting the level of visibility that we would like them to. And that's because the tag leadership team is a little bit short staffed. We all have full time jobs. Some of us are, are lucky enough to be able to do this on the clock. So we want to be able to leverage the community a lot more and have more of a vested interest in the direction, planning and management of the work that the tag undertakes. And a lot of that has to go through initial triage. What are the projects or proposals or suggestions or issues that are coming into the tag? How do we look at them? Are they in alignment with the roadmap? How do we queue them up for community discussion? And how do we ensure that they're being tracked through from a 
from a suggestion or a proposal all the way out to a potential project on the roadmap coming up later. And this is something that um, the tech leads and the chairs have kind of been doing in the background. <laughs> and if you've noticed, we've been slow rolling a lot of the projects because we simply don't have capacity to do everything all at once. And we've got some really active folks in the community that we don't want to burn out. So what we're looking for is to expand that triage capability to the community a little bit more. There is a triage channel that we have it's like tag security triage i believe um, and we're looking to get more community involvement to help us look at some of these issues that we have coming up determine whether or not they should go on the agenda for community discussion to see if they're worth pursuing or kind of ping the chairs and the tech leads that hey this needs this has a pr that's open against it something to just help us manage how we're working and running the sig or tag we're tag now that, that would take a while for the muscle memory to go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that we will, um, part of it is just like, um, you know, going through the issues, looking at things and using, using judgment to kind of figure out um, whether this, you know, maybe needs a bit more review, maybe it's good to merge and things like that. Um, and also, I think that we want to define this a little bit more so that more members can come in as well. So I think there'll be discussions going on along the triage channel. And as usual, we will create a document that explains what triage is and how to do it. So a lot of this, for those of you that are new and you're, you kind of want to stretch in your professional chats, this is a good opportunity to like stretch into a little bit more of project management or open source management, because this is really the bread and butter of successful open source efforts is how do we manage our issues and how do we put work on the docket to be performed. This is also a good opportunity for you to have better visibility across all the streams of work that go on within the SIG. And and understanding kind of where that community direction is. So if you're looking more across cloud native security architectures into the next horizon of what is the community concerned about, this is a good opportunity to give you a certain level of visibility that you would not otherwise get. And so um, I guess to wrap up, if you're interested, we will put the link to the um, the channel in the chat and please join and we will you know start getting this uh, getting this moving forward. Excited about all the issues that we have. We 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 are in a unique situation we have that we have a lot of issues <laughs> compared to the compared to, to some other groups. And I would like to add that we have a very active tag, like very active. A lot of the other tags um, have limited membership. We have a lot of membership. We have a lot of identity in the community. So any help that we can get to help promote that, even for first timers, that would be fabulous. All right, um, any questions about uh, triage? Okay, if not, let's move on to the next item, um, which is the very exciting supply chain document. Um, Jonathan, are you on? Seems like he is not on. Okay, so quick update on the supply chain document. Um, so we're waiting on final concurrence from Liz Rice, who is one of our talk liaisons. So typically with papers, we get our talk liaison concurrence before we contact the CNCF to do an official publication on it. So we are, um, I believe all of the comments have been submitted and remediated or uh, adjudicated. So we're just waiting on final confirmation and then we will fire it off to the CNCF. So hopefully sometime in the next two weeks, you guys will get a nice happy email that says, hey, supply chain paper is published and available at this blog. 
Out of curiosity, does the supply chain paper define its relationship to some of the DoD stuff that was going on? So there are some references within that. Um, a lot of, if you're familiar with the DoD software factory and some of that work that was presented in the community or some of the blogs and articles that already exist, a lot of the lessons learned and a lot of the core components of that have been pulled into the supply chain document and either expanded or abstracted for industry and public community as well as government and academia. So there's a lot of crosswalk between them, but there is not an explicit go here, go go to pull your own iron bank or your own um, platform one. Cool, thank you. Yeah, and I'm gonna drop a link um, to the draft in the the chat as well. So if you uh, if you want to take a look through, this is this is public. Cool. So looking forward to that. Um, and next on the list, we have. Um, the Nuts Foundation Energy Meeting on Critical Infrastructure. Cole, are you on? Yeah, yeah, I'm on. Um, so real quick, uh, I had a really great call with uh, uh, Shuli uh, Goodman of the Linux Foundation Energy. Um, and, you know, talking about how, you know, we've used identity in some of these critical infrastructure projects. Uh, so we are meeting uh, next Thursday to discuss, uh, you know, how to secure critical infrastructure as it starts to move to more of a cloud native type environment, right? All these, these are all just like little IoT devices connected to pipelines, electrical grids, et cetera, right? Um, so pulled in some, a couple members from the, uh, the Spire community, but if anyone else is interested in joining that and maybe providing some input on, on how to move forward, um uh, send me a dm on uh, on slack and i'll get you an invite awesome is is it still called scada security are they still using that name or <laughs> yeah it's uh like your admin and ot networks and there's a there's a bunch of little blog articles about it right now uh with the colonial pipelines attack so uh trying to do something there uh, uh with that with, with that incident Awesome. Do you, do you think you could kind of um, post uh, the those blogs and the if they're published, can you post a link to them in the in the chat? Post a link to what? Um, the the blog that you talked about. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll throw a couple of links in there. Uh, there's there's one guy, Tom Aldrich, I think is how you pronounce his name. But anyways, he he's got a pretty good one. Um, uh, about some of the issues involved with security OT networks and why they actually have to be connected to these admin networks, um, you know, with some of the stuff that they want to do. So it's really interesting. There's a lot of really interesting pre-existing knowledge in that space as well, just in general about SCADA systems, particularly the attacks that happened in the early 2000s and that are regularly ongoing. So if anybody is interested in researching or learning about that further, let me know. I have access to a bunch of links and articles from work that I've done for a talk I have coming up. Awesome. Are we bringing back stocks then? <laughs> Uh, all right. So, um, any any quick comments? Any any more questions before we move forward? All right. If not, I think the next item as well is, belongs to you, Cole and Mikkel. Yeah, I'll I'll just go ahead. And let Mikkel uh, take this one. Uh, so with the kind of the work that uh, Cole and I have been doing on Entoto, we are trying to get things signed with short-lived keys. And I guess I was just kind of looking for an appeal to anyone who may have experience with trusted timestamping and RFC 3161 and potentially implementing that. Uh, as far as I know, RFC 3161, which is trusted timestamping in the protocol, but it doesn't really specify any standard um, transports. So I was just curious uh, to appeal to the community to see if anyone had any experience with that and if they'd be willing to work with me on it. And I'll add a lot of context to this is this is with our in total going fork. One of the issues that we have is with those short lived keys. We need some way to assert the, that that uh, we sign that metadata within the 
validity time of, of those keys. And I think looking at RFC 3161 might, might be a way to do that. So looking for you know any input from the community on how to uh, possibly um, handle some of those those things. Um, you know, I think tough is an additional way forward on that as well. Yeah, I was thinking about Justin Kaffos um, or Santiago because they're working a lot on tough. Yeah, I mean, I'm not either of them, but I do work, just do some work on tough as well. And um, it doesn't use the RFC. Um, sorry, I'm bad at the, the number, remembering the number with the, the timestamp RFC. But um, the, the timestamp rule in tough um, combined with the in toto metadata can provide a similar um, timestamping mechanism. Yeah. Um I mean, should we should we break this off? On t I mean, I, I would like to kind of discuss this a little bit further. And I know this meeting is kind of packed. Um, I know Mikhail would too. Is, is there? Can we can we link up in Slack and maybe find a time um, next week to go into a little bit more deeper technical discussion? Yeah, sure. That'd be that'd be great. Okay. Um, and just just hit me up in Slack if anyone else is interested in that, and we'll find a time that works for everyone. Yeah, I, I also recommend just creating an issue for the discussion, just in case folks are not on the call wanna, wanna also jump on. Okay, perfect. Um, also, I'm not sure whether this is relevant, but um, so I know Six Star has an implementation called Full Show, uh, which does like, it's not really timestamping, but they, they kind of mint short lift keys for developers to sign artifacts and things like that. I don't think it's direct implementation of RFC. I'll put a link in the chat. All right, cool. Um, Marina, uh, you're, you're working on the in total tough stuff? At the Work on, on the tough project, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, all right, awesome. Yeah, just since way over the other side of the world now. <laughs> so good to have someone here that we can chat with about. Um, okay. Um, next on the agenda, we have Talk Custodian. Um, Robert? Yes, uh, so uh, Cloud Custodian has been uh, waiting for a, well, I guess we'll call the joint review these days. Um, and leading up to this, uh, Kapil, I think is on the call as well, has uh, provided us a very good in-depth security overview. Uh, Chase, who I think is also on the call, has been reviewing that as well. And we have another volunteer, uh, Ricardo, who I don't see on. I think he's out of CERN. Okay. Um, but Amy had asked kind of as a, a process point of order that they submit their incubation TOC PR, which they have. Um, and, and Kapil, you feel free to jump in if you want to give any color commentary around that. Um, so I just wanted uh, to split the world into pre-COVID and post-COVID, and this has all been going on pre-COVID. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so Ricardo is our talk sponsor, um, and uh, we've been meeting with him regularly. Uh, the, we're on our third process, uh, so to speak, uh, with regards to CNCF. I believe now the the talk sponsor has a lot of the due diligence effort and is supposed to delegate back to, sorry, the tag, um, uh, just trying to keep all my names straight and my links straight on meetings. Um, and uh, so uh, Robert's been leading a lot on from a SIG perspective and sorry, tag perspective. And uh, now I'm trying to uh, like, like give a chance for those two to meet. But with regards to the meeting, the presentation itself, we're happy to give one. We have given one uh, almost uh, 18 months ago. Uh, I don't know if that suffices. So uh, with regards to that particular request, I, I would ask for some clarification on is it uh, helpful to have another one? Uh, does the existing one suffice? Um, just trying to get through the process and do all the right things. So is this, um, are you putting, is Cloud Custodian out for incubation or graduation? Incubation. Incubation, okay. So I believe that, so in this case, Ricardo, who's the TOC sponsor, um, would 
I think this was, I think based on what we talked about in the talk call, they will kind of determine what the ask is uh, for the six. And so he, I think that we can probably, um, if he pings he, like one of the, the chairs, I think maybe you can have a discussion of what is required. Um, the review is definitely going to be like the base of the recommendation. So I, but, sorry, yeah. so, sorry, apologies. Uh, Ricardo is um, uh, new to the talk. So, and this process is also new. So uh, who is a good guidepost for him that we can like uh, to um, understand what the current process is and, and the, um, if he has questions per se, we, we've been trying to do our own research to help him in that process. So also trying to understand what the best way to go about it is. So I wanna disentangle stuff because in my brain, they're a little mixed. So there's two things going on. There's the PR for incubation, which requires a form of due diligence review. And then there is an existing issue within the tags repo to perform a security review of cloud custodian. That security review started pre-pandemic and has been on hold while we close out the build packs review. But traditionally in the tag processes and within the talk processes, if there is a security project, it goes through a security review by the tag for which the due diligence article comes as a recommendation out of those reviews. That is the traditional path that it has taken. That has not ever been really well documented and it's not consistently practiced. So I want to make sure like we're talking, you're, you're specifically referring to the incubation due diligence, correct? Or are you talking right. about- I'm referring to the current process uh, today. The current is the talk process, right? For incubation. Correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. So because now that we, now that we've got this- We started this process to go into sandbox uh, and we're in sandbox and um, we, we've continued to try to engage. I think part of the delays have actually been on the project side. Um, we have dedicated folks now that are engaged on that front. Uh, and, and Robert's been great to work with from the six uh, tag side. Um, but the, uh, I think the question is, is um, what is the question? The question is, I think we're related to the presentation uh, and do we, is that so useful? And if so, what form should it take? Um, so traditionally the presentation can happen at two points, um, just as a general awareness for the tag members of what the project is and what it does with the security focus. But there's also generally one at the end of a joint review that goes through the joint review and highlights some of the key findings, discoveries and recommendations that come out of it. Um, but, it's entirely on the project, considering that we haven't completed the joint review for Cloud Custodian, and you do have, it looks like, some uh, joint reviewers on the issue if you want to do a refresher on what Cloud Custodian is, because it's been 18 months and the world has almost fallen apart in that time, and we have new members, that would certainly be appreciated. Sounds good. So, so we should schedule an agenda item for scheduling that. Okay. Yep. And for presentations, uh, because you already have an issue for the project, I would just recommend doing a comment on that with when you would like to do the presentation, and then we can add it to the agenda. Sounds good. We'll look at the uh, future agenda and uh, see that where we can schedule. Yeah. And I, I think that Probably another thing on top of that, and Emily, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that I think um, based on the content of the due diligence document, um, if Ricardo could tell the chairs like where that requires any action for us for the, the DD doc, I think we can help. Uh, yeah, so right now, from a due diligence perspective, with regards to the talk DD with regards to incubation, um, we're leading him through various user production users right now. Um, and 
and maybe I need to re-review the uh, current incubation spec with regards to DD. Um, uh, as Emily suggested, these are two separate things with regards to uh, a six security, sorry, tag security review um, and the uh, talk TD, but there's a lot of overlap uh, with regards to the talk uh, sponsor delegating to the um, to the tag with regards to that DD work. And it's a little bit unclear to me where um, Should we just walk him through it as a project or should we be delegating to Robert and the tech have already done some like a good amount of work and in that regard? Yeah, and that's and that's my question. What has tag reviewers where what is our next step? Do we wait? Do we engage with Ricardo further? We had a we had a nice chat with Chase and I had a nice chat with him yesterday, but to Kapil's point, he didn't know the process. Um, so that's why I, I wanted to get this on the agenda today. So what is our next step as the tag reviewer? So I've pinged Amy to provide some clarification about what those expectations look like with regard to the tag, the joint review and the due diligence. Um, I can also mention about some general confusion with the talk sponsor about that process as well. Cause I think, I think we're all kind of like, I don't know. Um, and I can post back to the channel. I think I might not be on the channel for the assessment, but I can post back to the channel with what the recommendations come out with. For the talk sponsor, I would highly recommend some form of mentoring. Um, like we're, we're trying to provide that, but like I, I think from a general health of the process itself, I think that would be useful. Yeah, um, I think traditionally for the the, the due diligence side, we require a a chair sign off. So that is something that like uh, my perspective of it is you know treat the the review as a review once it's done then we can talk about due diligence and then due diligence is just gonna draw on the content of the review and from the recommendation of the, the reviewers. All right, yeah, and like, you know, if not, we, we, we can continue this discussion offline. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Robert and Kapil. Um, I think the last item that we have is on the policy. And I think right now is here now. Sorry, I was talking on mute. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> uh, Robert and I attended the policy working group meeting last time and uh, this iteration as well. And uh, they are working on a white paper, which is called Cloud Native Policy White Paper. Um, the link to the doc is in the, in the notes. Um, they are looking for a wider feedback from the SIG security team um, and the security tag, I should say. Um, so if you could please um, go through the table of contents. And if you think there, there is something we need to add or that is missing that will help build end-to-end um, -end policy management white paper, that'll be great. Uh, you can just comment in the paper itself and then we can discuss it in our working group session next time and uh, appropriately add it um, into the sections as well as the subsections. Do you wanna review it right now or you can do it offline? Either way, I'm, I'm open to that. Um, so this is the policy of our paper, right? Yes. And so how do we, um, how should we review this? Right now it's just table of contents, right? If you think from a policy perspective and security perspective, I mean, obviously this group is all about security um, and there are security policies uh, as well as security controls in the policies that we need to address as well. Mm -hmm. We tried to incorporate that as detective controls as well as enforcement controls. But if there is anything missing, uh, we want to get a wider set of eyes on it 
and get your feedback as well. Okay, so how, how would one um, provide feedback? Yeah, yeah, just you, you have um, permissions to it. It the document is open, you can just add a comment in the TOC itself that we should add this or we should not have this and remove it. And so I on. don't think I have access, so I'm assuming other people don't have access as well. Um, so Brandon, they said the document was open to the world. Well, I, I can read it, I just can't comment. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, unless I'm I'm bad at technology and I can figure it no, out. No, no, <laughs> that's not the case. Um, is Jim on the call? No, uh, no, he's not. Okay, we can reach out to Jim and make sure he opens up. Okay. All right. Well, in the meantime, if you have comments, if you want to just shoot me a message on Slack or email me, that'll be great. I can add it into the document. Awesome. Cool. Oh, so um, do we have any other items to talk about today? Any, any discussion things that anyone wants to bring up? Yes, I have another one that I forgot awesome. to mention earlier. So um, it was brought to our attention that our repository does not bear the correct IP license in accordance with the CNCF guidelines. Everybody loves a license. Um, so there is an active PR to change it from Apache 2.0 to Creative Commons by 4.0. Um, if you have any concerns, you can comment on it. However, we are required to be in compliance with the CNCF guidelines for how we are licensed because we do not have code in our repository. We have documentation and there really isn't a good way to manage dual licensing. So what we're going to do is there will be an email that goes out to our mailing list to let everybody know that the license is going to change with a given date, probably within the next week. That way we can get this merged in and become compliant and then the CNCF is happy. So sorry, if you have any variants of Creative Commons, uh, which one are we talking about? 4.0. Oh. Yeah. Uh, like non-attribution, commercial share alike, like there's there's it's uh if you look in the PR there's uh it's it's in the um if it's PR number Six one nine. The link in the chat. Um, it would be if anything like it's going from a um, least restrictive to six nineteen. Got it. Yeah. It 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 is kind of what whatever a lot of the I think most of the CNCF repositories use this. Yep. This is just to bring us into alignment. It's the same license most of the wikis use, most of the big wikis. Um, yep. So. Can I make um, a callback real quick? Sorry to be the guy at the end. Um, with the cloud custodian thing, I think I put a few things together for myself. So I just want to reflect it back with, which is when we spoke with Ricardo yesterday, um, he seemed unclear that we had dueling documents. We have the kind of historic um, cloud custodian assessment from the tag. And then there's the incubation documentation. And, and I don't think that he was kind of understanding the distinction there either that we've defined here. But if I understand correctly, the incubation process needs a TOC sign off and there's discretion there for them to like whether or not to request some level of formal assessment or whatever. And separately, the kind of long drag for the cloud custodian review that could that may or may not happen. Is that correct? Depending on sort of what the purview is of the TOC person to sign off. So, thank you for bringing that up. I have a lot of confusion here as well. At least with regards to the talking commission request, I try to normalize to what was already there or the, sorry, the most recent request was already there um, as far as incubating. Um, as far as the talk, my understanding is for a security related project that it is necessary. And I'm just stating this for feedback as well because I also want to get clarity on this because I'm um, 
also unclear based on what historical versus current. Sure. Okay. It sounds like maybe Ricardo gets a little bit of um, kind of tribal knowledge on, on what his role is. And then maybe Robert and I help you guys move forward on the assessment thing. Yeah, a lot of this is actually driven by the talk DD, at least with regards to incubation. Yep. So um, a okay. couple of things. Uh, we're going to assist Ricardo. We're being uh, tag security in some capacity is going to reach out and ensure that um, they have the right partnership to move forward. As far as that presentation goes, let's go ahead and get that on the books. That way it can be done and you can have that part of the incubation requirements checked off. And then the next question is really around that due diligence document. Um, since your joint review is still outstanding, I would recommend that we continue to pursue that once the build packs has completed their review, but we can certainly support any required areas of the due diligence document from the tag out of band from that joint review process. The presentation itself, there's not a whole lot that's changed in the last 18 months as far as focus area coverage, et cetera. So um, I understand it's definitely useful to represent it for our, our current audience, but content wise, I don't know that there's a whole lot that's changed or even end user production usage wise, uh, there's all, I mean, it's grown, but like uh, from a baseline of incubation or usage from a, uh, a tech security perspective, the yeah, I think for, perhaps for that, we can bundle together that presentation, which would be kind of a short reintroduction together with the security review um, kind of results. And then that could be considered as the presentation for the project. Definitely want to toss it back to Chase and Robert because they re-raised it, so. I mean, it's, it's part of the review process, right? So no matter what is going to happen, so. Um, I don't think we are doing any anything like uh, like extra and like there isn't really additional overhead there. We're happy to represent. I'll give us back to Chase and Robert. Okay, that sounds like Robert and I are gonna kind of hang out and wait for the wheel to turn, um, and that's fine. Yep, uh, I'm 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 gonna just continue reading the the Google Doc and and the Markdown uh, format and you know, answer questions if I can, ask questions if I can, and then Emily, Amy, I'm going to be waiting for the official green light. <laughs> yep, I'm working on it right now. Awesome. Awesome. So we've made it to the end of our long agenda today. Um, so is there anything else that we want to talk about? I know Chase one still wants to organize that talent show. And we have a friend who have Mikkel who plays drums here. So <laughs> it's gonna be 45 minutes of you. <laughs> and then everyone else gets like a three minute slot. So I have another um, request for everyone. If you could take some time and look through the repo, find anything that's outstanding, such as the SIG to tag and open a PR on it. That would be lovely, as well as review some of the ongoing issues that we have. Um, there was a lot of interest in completing some of them. We want to be able to queue up next big projects moving forward. And there's a lot of open PRs and the tech leads and the co-chairs are not the only ones that enjoy reviewing them. I'm sure you all would love to review them and provide your two cents. You are part of this community we want to hear your voices and we want to know what it is that you all want and where you want to move to and one of the best ways to do that is to be able to contribute through comments on prs as well as generating prs yourselves awesome all right if not um it's good to see everyone after KubeCon, and we'll see you next week have a good one <laughs>